ICP test. They're one of the most useful tools in the hobby for determining what's going on with your tank. They're also the bane of my existence. Let's get into it. Now, a lot of people use them, and for a pretty good reason, we even use them here. Um, I usually send them out either once or twice a month, but what are they? So ICP test stands for Inductively Coupled Plasma Optical Emission Spectroscopy. That's ICP OES. There's also ICP MS, which uses the mass of the atoms instead of the wavelength of them to determine what's in them. That's what brands like ICP Analysis use, rather than some of the other brands that use ICP OES. There's been a little bit of controversy about these recently. Um, there was a few threads on Reef to Reef, as well as some other YouTube videos that kind of talk about some of the discrepancies between ICP test brands. And I've definitely noticed this uh, back when we first sent out some of our first few ICP tests from our old store up front, we actually had um, a couple of different results that seemed a little strange. A lot of them were pretty close together, but one of the ICP tests we used actually said that our water had uranium in it, which we thought was a little bit of strange. Um, but the other ICP test that we had sent out, an ICP OES test, uh, actually said we had zero uranium. So. There's slight inconsistencies like that that kind of got in my head and made me think a little bit harder about these ICP tests that we're sending out. So little things like that made me start to question the ICPs and a little bit about what's happening there. But we ended up continuing to send them out fairly regularly and they actually did help us indicate a very large issue that we had. Uh, we had a ton of chromium in our system and we couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, eventually we narrowed it down. It was the, actually the plugs we were using were being dyed with chromium and that was leaching back into our tanks and causing our corals to die. We ended up losing almost all of our acros and it was definitely very tough, but this was really only because we had so many plugs in such a small area. And so I think that's why no one had really caught on to those plugs. And actually the guy's out of business right now that was selling us those plugs, which makes sense. And is probably pretty good for the hobby overall. Things like that, we were able to detect with the ICP and we really never would have noticed unless we were testing with an ICP. Now, one thing I do want to note is that a lot of people get hung up on the ICP test results and they'll especially shoot for elements that are like alkalinity that you can test with the kit at home. And with that, I really don't recommend it because it's not gonna be as accurate as a lot of those home tests. And additionally, if you're sending out your alkalinity test and it takes, let's say, a week to get your results back, by that point, your alkalinity is gonna be varied a lot since when you sent that test out, especially if you're not dosing anything. Now, if you are dosing, it might stay the same, it might increase. What I really like ICP tests for is more the trace elements, things that aren't gonna get sucked up super quickly, like iodine, potassium, any sort of other small trace elements on the periodic table that you might want to know about, either toxic metals like the chromium that we were able to find. And a lot of these elements can be harmful, especially in very high levels. And these ICP tests not only usually give you the actual reading that you're at, but they also will usually tell you what a good range is to be in, which I find very helpful because it means I don't have to spend 20 minutes researching some random element on the periodic table and how it affects my reef tank. So things like that are very helpful with the ICP test and it's why we typically send them out once every month, if not more frequently, if we see something off in a tank. Now, the cons of these ICP tests is a lot of people jump straight to them. Like I said, they're very useful for determining what's going wrong with the tank. So if I see some of my corals aren't looking great, I run a full sweep of tests, alkalinity, nitrates, phosphates, all those sort of standard tests that we do pretty much every week or twice a week here at the shop. After I run those, I'll go through the corals that aren't looking happy. I'll inspect them, see if there's any sort of pests, which usually doesn't take long um, because I know what's coming into the store, what's been dipped, pretty much everything gets dipped. And so unless it's in one of our quarantine systems, it's probably not gonna be a pest. I'll usually go through all that testing, look through the tanks to look for any sort of pests. And then after that, I'll jump to an ICP test to send out and give me a reading on some of the other trace elements that I can't really test for here in the shop. But a lot of people will send them out more regularly and use them in a way where it's not really benefiting you to send this test out, especially if it's some sort of 
normal element like calcium or alkalinity that you're not testing for at home, then you're gonna be thrown off by all these 30 elements that it's testing for instead of just focusing on the basics. So I always recommend before you jump into an ICP test to look for any sort of problems, you do a full sweep of water tests. If you don't have test kits that are reliable, usually the store that you're shopping at will have some reliable test kits. Personally, I really like HANA and Red Sea. Salford is also a really good brand. And even API is really good for giving you a baseline. If your alkalinity is four, API is gonna tell you that and you're gonna be able to correct that over time. Now, one thing to note about all these ICP tests is that when they tell you a reading is off, it's very important to adjust it back very slowly. So if you're, let's say, adjusting your alkalinity, that's something you wanna creep up on very slowly because if you have a swing that can nuke your tank, it can kill your corals. The stress of a large change in that element can sort of mess up your corals. Now the same thing is true for other elements like iron, potassium, all those other traces. If you are trying to increase it, that's fine, but you wanna do it slowly and take your time. And I recommend waiting about a week after you dose it, send out an IC, another ICP test and make sure that that element is actually increased and not increased too much. Because what will sometimes happen is things like iron are very beneficial for a lot of the colorations we see in the aquarium, especially things like greens and yellows. But if you overdose that, you'll definitely run into problems with your corals dying or even some of your other inverts because it is a heavy metal at the end of the day and can be toxic to a lot of the animals in your aquarium. Now, another con of the ICPs, as I was sort of getting into, is the accuracy. It's somewhat questionable and I definitely would recommend sending out another test with another brand if you start to get some crazy readings like your potassium is at 5,000. Um, things like that aren't super likely, especially if you still have living animals in your tank. So I would recommend sending out another ICP test if you see anything crazy off the charts or all the way bottomed out to zero, just to make sure that it was tested properly and there wasn't any sort of error in the testing. Now, a lot of times you don't really need to worry about trace elements getting too far out of whack, especially higher, unless you're dosing something like those trace elements. The Red Sea Colors program has a lot of those trace elements in it as well. Also, if you're dosing something like nitrate and phosphate, a lot of times that will be potassium nitrate and potassium phosphate. You can switch to a sodium nitrate or a sodium phosphate if your potassium is getting too high. Okay, now I wanna look at an article posted on Reef to Reef. It's titled, Hobby Grade Test Kits Can Outperform ICP Measurements. Really? Now, what this article found after sending out tests to various ICP providers, as well as using different hobbyists to test their own water, what they found is that the increased precision of ICP tests isn't really there, and hobby grade test kits actually perform very well. And because you're testing it over and over again, and using the same methodology, it actually ends up being more precise. and You get a tighter range of numbers than the ICP test sending them in, especially if you're using different brands. Now, what this should do is not necessarily scare us away from ICP tests because I do believe that they are a very valuable tool, but instead allow us to focus more on testing at home and using these higher grade test kits like Red Sea and HANA especially to lock in our parameters and making sure that we're staying consistent with our testing. It's very easy to slip behind. It's even happened to us in the store when we get really busy, we won't test for a week and everything will still look fine. But if that jumps to two, three, four weeks, you can really start to run into problems. So I always recommend testing at least once a month as long as you have a more established tank. If your tank is a little newer, I'd say under six months, it's best to test twice a month or even once a week, especially if you're sort of adjusting your dosing or adding a bunch of corals. We test here once or twice a week on all of our systems. It takes almost an entire day because we have so many different systems here at the shop, but it's definitely worth it to keep our corals growing and happy because there are definitely chemicals that if a dosing pump gets clogged or we run out in a dosing pump of dosing material, things will get way out of whack super quickly. Luckily, we haven't really run into any issues of overdosing, but we'll definitely have occasional clogs or running out 
that'll happen and really throw off our numbers. But if we're testing twice a week, especially, we can catch it before it really runs into any problems. And because we're adding so many new corals and selling so many corals and there's just a lot of in and out, it's definitely good to keep better track of our parameters because they can swing quite a bit. But typically for a home aquarium, I recommend, like I said, once a month or twice a month is gonna be really more than enough for you as long as you're not doing any wild swings or changes to your aquarium or dosing regimen. All right, so what am I gonna do with all these ICP tests if they're not accurate? Well, I'm gonna use them. I do think ICP tests are very useful, especially if you have a problem in your tank, but I don't send them out all the time, especially for elements that I can test here in the shop. I use it for any sort of heavy metals or leaching that might be happening in my tanks. They do do a very good job of identifying things like that that I can't test for. So I'll continue to send these guys out and probably continue to use them in perpetuity, especially even if I somehow go through all these, which will probably take about a month. But overall, I wouldn't be afraid of using these guys. I would just make sure that you focus on your testing at home and ensuring that you're not trying to take the easy way out by having someone test your water for you and instead take it to your local fish store and make them test it for you. No, seriously though, I do think it's good for you guys to make sure you're testing your water. I think water testing is one of the most important things to maintaining a successful reef tank because otherwise you have no idea what's happening. If things are going up, things are going down. Looking at the corals is a great way to gauge how things are doing, but testing helps you determine any problems before they actually come up. That's why I also will send these out periodically just as a preventative measure, even if I don't have something wrong, just to make sure I don't have some sort of element that's climbing or dropping. For instance, our manganese is usually always low and ganiaporas for sure definitely love that. So I always try to keep an eye out for that and see if it's getting low so that way I can help dose and make up and correct that before it gets out of control. So in short, if you have a higher grade hobbyist level test kit, like a HANA or a Red Sea or a Salford, you really should prioritize those results over an ICP test because those are gonna be the most consistent to your aquarium and to your testing method and really give you very accurate results that you really aren't gonna to need to look at these. I hope you guys enjoyed this video going over some of the woes of ICP testing. And I hope this better helped you understand how to ICP test, when to use it, when to send it out, and some of the guidelines for at-home testing. I will see you guys in the next video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to like down below as well as subscribe so you guys can stay up to date on our latest content. And leave a comment down below. Have you guys sent on an ICP test? Did you like it? Did you think the results might be inaccurate? Let me know. I'll see you guys later.